Hey, you shoot 50 caliber a lot, right? I do a lot of 50 caliber. But now you're also getting into PCP rifles, right? Yes, PCP rifles are addicting and I'm addicted. And you're half Italian, half cowboy, right? That I am. Mezzo di Roma. And the other half, I'm from Texas. Well, what if I told you that there is a cowboy PCP rifle that shoots 50 caliber out there and that is actually just perfect for you? Well, I'd say it's easier for me to believe in Santa Claus. Oh my. Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel, and as always, thank you so much for watching. So before heading out to the Florida Everglades, let's step into my office for a minute, because I really want to show you why I am so particularly excited about today's video. You see, for the very first time, I'm going to be shooting my 50 caliber Seneca Dragon Claw PCP rifle. This rifle is actually not new at all. It's been around a number of years, but what I will be doing with it, well, I don't think anybody's ever done it. And given that so far on my channel, I've shot and continue to shoot virtually every single 50 caliber projectile out there, I thought why not try shooting them from this beast of a rifle right here. As many of you know, I recently did a kind of a reversed video uh, where we shot these, the Seneca 50 caliber uh, pellets, which were actually made for this rifle. And we shot them with the HDR 50. And today we'll do the exact opposite, hoping not to jam or break anything. As you see, I have a lot of 50 caliber ammo left over from my previous videos. So we sure do have a lot of material for future great experiments. Today, however, I only want to shoot one of these. And I thought we'd start with one of the most famous brands out there, the Polish made 50 caliber Devastator. As you know, these are very well made and balanced uh, plastic projectiles that bear a large metal BB. This is how we load it. We have our Devastator here. Will the plastic resist the brutal PCP force or will it crumble inside of the barrel, perhaps ruining my brand new rifle? We will find out. So please send thoughts and prayers for what's about to come. Oh, and I almost forgot, very, very importantly, Please hit that like button if you don't mind. And if you haven't done so, do subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of cool videos here. Anyway, to be able to compare the effects of the Devastators, we'll also be shooting slugs that were actually made for the Dragon Claw, like the Senecas from my previous uh, video. And these, these American made NSA Nielsen Spe Speciality Ammo. Uh, they are 235 grain. We'll see. We'll see them in more in detail soon. But uh, they're very, very, very cool looking. And of course, these Umarex, very cool looking slugs that I bought, making the usual stupid rookie mistake. They were 50 caliber. They looked awesome. So I bought them. Well, little did I check that their size is actually 0.510 inches. And well, as we'll see in a moment, the, the rifle's barrel measures 0 0.496. So they're too big, but it's okay. I'll keep them for when I put my hands on the right gun. And for now, I'll just wear them to look cool.
two quick last things before we head out to the Everglades to finally shoot this thing. So let me give you some specs. We'll then put some glass on it. We'll put some air in it and we'll go shoot it. So again, this is a 50 caliber single shot pre-charged pneumatic or PCP rifle. It has a rifled barrel that measures 0.490 to 0.496 in diameter. It is bolt action with two power levels for lower and higher power shots, but we will see that in a minute in the field. Dual air chambers that hold 500 cc total air capacity. Fixed front sight and fully adjustable removable rear sight. Maximum pressure 200 bars or 3000 psi that you can read in this built-in manometer. Hardwood Monte Carlo stock with checkered forearm grip. It comes with an 11 millimeter scope rail, which as you know, it's a lot smaller than your average 21 millimeter Picatinny uh, rail. So you can either buy an adjustment to add on to it or just smaller mounts for your scope. Today, we'll be using the scope. All right, folks, here we are. Welcome to the Florida Everglades. As you see, I've already set up my tunnel of destruction, so-called by me. And I just set up four half inch plywood uh, sheets. So let's, hard, let's start with the hard stuff right away. All right, so we're gonna shoot the plywood through the chronograph. I wanna see uh, the difference in speed between these uh, projectiles here. I'm keeping it at a minimal distance. I know this is a very powerful gun. I just don't know how powerful. So uh, we're gonna be shooting the plywood from 10 meters, which is 33 feet. As I said earlier, we'll be shooting uh, using the scope. This is an easy shoot scope that was sent to me uh, quite, quite a while back. Uh, it's been working great so far. So of course, we'll first um, align it with this mid 10 laser bore sighter, an amazing tool. If you guys don't have one, you should absolutely get one. As always, I'll have all the links in the description below. All right, let's load our Devastator. Eight hundred eighty feet per second, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, you are reading correctly. Let's go see what it did here to this half-inch plywood. So it went through the first one. Oh, I see the plastic casing stuck between the first and the second. It went through the third. And it went through the fourth. Wow. Wow, guys. <laughs> Four plywood, half inch plywood, like butter. Well, now we know that the Devastators work very well from this gun. Amazing. So let's compare them to uh, these right here, these NSAs. Again, we'll chrono test them and see what kind of damage they will do on the half inch plywood. I suspect these will make slightly of a larger hole. All right.
my 550. Obviously, it is a much of a heavier projectile. Let's go see what happened here on the plywood. Seems like we have similar sized entry holes. Gets a bit bigger on the second one. Stays bigger on the third one. Again, bigger on the fourth. And it kept on traveling. And look at the entry versus the exit. So as we said, with this gun, uh, you can choose two different powers. So you can cock it halfway for a lower power and then you can cock it all the way for a full power. Now I shot two shots at full power and I don't know if you can see it, but we are completely, it's like we're completely in the green, basically. Uh, the gauge it did not go down a bit. Again, with two full powered shots. So we'll see at the end of the whole session how much air we will have left. Now, why am I all dressed up like a cowboy? You've probably been wondering up to now. Well, that's because I'm holding this rifle that is as Western as it can be. True cowboy stuff, a symbol of real American history, a gun that was made in Korea. Many, as many of you know, I am on a mission to get rid of as many SpaghettiOs as I can from this world. This is not food waste. This is poison waste. This is junk waste. This is saving lives. So we now have six SpaghettiO cans in a row to see if our devastators shot from the Dragon Claw will penetrate all six of them or not. Okay, so the first shot was not very centered, but... <laughs> I mean, it, it just sliced this can, the side of the can open. And again, I just, I, I, I grazed it, it missed. Let's try again, hopefully I'll center it. All right, folks, this is becoming very, very disappointing. Uh, basically at the first attempt, I hit the side of the cans as you saw, but then I went through almost a whole box of these and I completely missed every single time. It's the first time I'm shooting this gun. Uh, it is quite windy. These obviously are very light projectiles. So they just keep going off, off. Um, so the gun now is very, very low on power. So we're gonna go have to charge it in the car. All right, folks, we are all gassed up again. All right, folks, we finally hit some of these SpaghettiOs. Uh, not all of them, it is hard to get them all as they are lined up. But I am glad to be done because these things were sure hard to hit. Um, let's move on to the next one, two, three, and four watermelons. Uh, against the four watermelons, I'm going to shoot, of course, the Devastator first, and then we'll try one of these Seneca Air Venturi slugs. All right, let's see what happened here. So the Devastator entered the first one, then entered the second one, came out, entered the third one, and it's probably still stuck in there. Wow, okay, that is strange, given that it went through four half-inch plywood pieces of wood 
but it did not go through all four watermelons. Again, very, very interesting. Anyway, I'm going to switch the watermelons around and we will now try one of these. <laughs> Pure awesome, but I shot too high. I'm going to shoot again, hopefully hitting the center. All right, guys, up next, our usual fiberglass mannequin. With a little difference, as you notice, we have a weird looking head. Now, this is a bottle of vodka, and I filled it up with flour. So we have a glass bottle, skull shaped, filled with flour, and a fiberglass mannequin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot the, the mannequin, the fiberglass part, with the Devastator. As, as many of you know, I've shot this plenty of times with plenty of slugs. Uh, devastators as well. Nothing ever penetrated completely. I want to see if they will penetrate uh, shooting, being shot with this gun here. But for the head, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to I'm going to reserve the head for one of these. Well, the head is gone and the Devastator finally completely penetrated and it came out of the other side. The only thing that did that was arrows, PCP arrows, and now PCP Devastators. Okay, our next target is going to be this cake pan oven metal tray thing. I'll be shooting with the Devastator. Let's see what happens. So the Devastator <laughs> just went through like butter. Amazing. Well guys, I have nothing left to shoot. I didn't bring any coconuts, I'm sorry. And I did bring the water jugs, but I guess it's completely useless for me to shoot them. As we saw, this gun went through everything, went through metal sheets, went through plywood, several plywood sheets. Um, so it would just be a waste of plastic to use those uh, water jugs. Um, <laughs> You guys, tell me what you think about this gun. I'm just in love with it. I love the looks of it. I love the power of it. I don't even hunt, as many of you guys know. I don't even hunt. Uh, why do I do this? I just enjoy it. I enjoy the ballistics of it. I enjoy the visuals of it, the slow motions, just the power of these things, and obviously the beauty as well. So I am extremely impressed. First time shooting this amazing, amazing powerful gun. Uh, my good friend at Cododo, the Italian brand that makes uh, T4E ammo, is actually designing a uh, specific bullet just for this gun, and just for Airgun Alley. So I'm very looking forward to testing that soon. Um, but anyway, yes, again, you guys tell me what you thought about this gun. Uh, I can't believe we shot the Devastators through it. I, I was really worried that the plastic was going to screw up the gun somehow. It was going to blow up in the, in the barrel or something. But it said it did not. They, went, they delivered. They, went, they flew straight and they penetrated everything. The plastic casing stayed intact until impact. Um, so uh, it's a cool gun all around. Obviously, these are not designed for this gun, but why not? Please tell me what you thought, guys. Thank you so much. And do watch this video next if you have nothing else to watch because it's just awesome.